welcome back to your week-by-week, lesson-by-lesson course in Egyptian hieroglyphics. Middle Kingdom. Well, a little bit of later kingdom, too. But the point is, we're learning hieroglyphics, and we're doing it from home. Which means if you're learning something, we now have homework, because that's how you learn, as you practice. All right, so at the end of the last lesson, I gave you guys a sentence to learn. And uh, let's see how we did, uh, learn, you know, dividing this up, figuring out where the words are. And I'm also going to, as I go through, give a few more clues on how to do this. So again, we'll continue to learn and be able to do it better each time. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is circle the determinatives, because these help us understand the words and we know that they're not pronounced. Pretty much any person is a determinative, and in the word to see, the I is a determinative. It has uh, its uh, transposition due to, uh, to it looking better that way. All right, then once we've found the determinatives, the next thing to do is to draw a line before and after the words that have them, and this is how we can help divide up words. So the bottom right there, we see a determinative for man, and... Therefore, we can put a line before it and a line after it, helping us to divide up the word and understand where one word ends and one word begins. All right, so let's go ahead and do some reading. We'll go word for word. So our first word there is nyasu, which, if you remember from your vocabulary, means individual person. We have our uh, determinative of a person after it, reminding us it's a word about People, so not you, individual person. All right, next up we have the word bin with a uh, with the W there, which always means a weak thing. So this is evil. So bin, which means evil individual. All right, now the next word is her with the uh, stroke line, which re remember means is, and that tells us what verb tense we're in, that we're in uh, the present tense. So the next is seeing, and we see the determinative for I, which is moved for uh, transposition. So ma'a, seeing, is seeing. The evil individual is seeing. Now we have n at the bottom there, which means towards a person, or t uh, towards a, well, yeah, any person, so towards. And uh, yes, I probably should have written that farther off to the left. Hope I didn't confuse people with that one. All right. All right, so towards, and then we have t, the t, the s with the t, and then a determinative of a woman, which means the woman or a woman. There's no definite articles in Egyptian, so it could be the woman, a woman, or just woman. Now we have our description of that woman, which is nefer, which means wonderful or beautiful, and context will tell you which word to use. So the adjective coming after it is a beautiful woman or a wonderful woman. Then we have Hana, which is with. So the beautiful woman is with someone. So there we have the evil man that is looking towards a beautiful woman who is with. And the next word is s. We have the door bolt with the determinative of a person, of a man. So again, a man or the man or just man. No definite articles in Egyptian. And uh, then we have our final word, ikr, which is uh, astute or excellent. So the entire sentence now reads, individual evil is seeing towards woman wonderful with man astute. Or if you were going to actually put that into English, it would read, the evil individual is seeing towards the beautiful woman with the astute man, or excellent man. And there you go. Did you get all that? Awesome. All right, so with last week's homework out of the way, let's move on to some new vocabulary. So this is the uh, papyrus, the boot, papyrus, and three water signs. It's going to be pronounced ibi, I-B-I, or Y-B-I. Now, those water signs at the end could be the double consonant sound mw, M-W, but in this case, it's a determinative. So the word means thirsty, 
And the reason that you have the three water signs, which could be mwa, the double consonant sound, is because it's related to water, thirsty being related to water, and because it's the end of the word, it helps to tell you it's a determinative and not a sound. All right, so following up thirsty, here we have hakar, hakar, uh, H-K-R, with a man determinative at the end, so flax, hill, and mouth hieroglyphs. So this is the word hungry, or much like thirsty, these could both be a person who is thirsty or a person who is hungry. It works both ways in Egyptian, or it could mean to hunger. So again, context will tell you. So the determinative at the end of a person is reminding you that it is a determinative about a type of person. Now, I suppose a, a man determinative could follow thirsty as well, and it could have a double determinative. So both thirsty or the thirsty, hungry or the hungry, or a person who is hungry. Just the way ancient Egyptian works, you'll get used to it over time, and it'll, uh, it'll just start to sink in, because as you see with context. Some verb review. So we've done this one, the mouth over the hand holding a loaf, radi, or just the loaf, which looks like a pyramid with a pyramid inside, or a triangle triangle, is radi. This means to give. So that you've got the hand there under the mouth giving a loaf, or just the loaf itself uh, without the hand or the R. Both are pronounced radi, and this is the verb to give. Another important verb, the I with a mouth under it, is er, I-R-R. -R, or if you just have the I, I-R, the I meaning the eyeball. So this means to make. And obviously you wouldn't pronounce that second R. It's not I -er, like a pirate, I-R-R. It's just I-R. It can mean to make or to do or to act. It's kind of like faire in French, which has many uh, sort of colloquial meanings. All right, here's another one for you. Habasu. This means clothing. So it's got the flax, the boot, the uh, bolt of cloth, and then the W meaning a plural. So this is clothes or clothing. Uh, plural. If it didn't have the W, just habas, it would be, well, I guess one cloth, but that's not a thing. <laughs> so clothe, it's like, you know, sheep and sheep. So he followed up by ha'ai, which is the naked or those needing clothing, not like a nudist, but more the naked, someone who lacks having clothing. And you'll see this in a lot of Stella where they say, I gave clothes to the naked. All right. Here is your homework for this week. So freeze frame this one, print it out, rewrite it yourself, and see if you can dissect it just like we did with the homework from last week that we reviewed at the beginning of today's video. And again, you can use your determinatives for clues where words start and stop and uh, your clues as to what verb tense we're using. If you need any help or you have questions, please let me know. I want to make this video series the best it can possibly be. So all feedback is welcome. I really appreciate you being in the class. Give this video a like. Give it a share. It tells YouTube to share it with more people. That's what it's all about, sharing fun knowledge about doodling. Not just doodling, but doodling with purpose. I'll see you next week. Good luck with the homework.